Can you turn slow twitch muscle fibers into explosive fast twitch fibers? If you want to find out, we're going to start right now. So what fiber types are there? There's a type one, which is gonna be more endurance based. There's a type two A, which is going to be the type of fiber that you're gonna use when you're doing a heavy load, like a back squat or a bench press. It's explosive, but not as explosive as that third type, which is gonna be type two X. So what is a muscle fiber and how can it be identified? And so right away, it's a myosin heavy chain isoform. And typically this is gonna be identified through biopsies. And you can do this through single fiber isolation or through massive stains. If you've ever watched Ricky Brook back in the day, the classic throws video, you can actually see him getting a biopsy in his shoulder to see what his twitch type was like in his shoulder. What it does, is it really can predict where we're gonna be good within specific sports. And this is all gonna be based off that genetic foundation. We can then take those twitch types or those fiber types and say, all right, if we have someone who is more type one, they're a little bit more Gumby-ish, they have a little bit more endurance, they can handle high volume of work because they can't put out a ton of intensity, they're probably gonna be marathon runners or 10K runners or, or maybe, maybe a steeplechaser, but typically very, very long distance runners, ultra marathoners even. Then if we look at someone like Lu Zhaojun, so Lu Zhaojun is arguably one of the best weightlifters of all time. He's very, very likely at an early age, he had a lot of type 2X and that sort of predicted him being put into that weightlifting world. Like Elaine Thompson, okay, she's possibly the best female sprinter ever. I would say she is the best female sprinter ever. She's a 100 meters sprinter and a 200 meter sprinter and she very likely has a large amount of type 2a and type 2x and so she'll have that ability to have a large amount of power output that can also be sustained for you know 20 to 22 seconds even bodybuilders which you know theoretically most people will say well bodybuilding is going to make you slow but as we'll find out bodybuilders have a large amount of type 2a and a much greater percentage relative to control groups of type 2x so genetics plays a massive role in where athletes are gonna be going with their sports performance career and also what happens prior to hitting puberty. So there's a fair amount of research that when we're growing up and when we're aging, so when you're raising a kid, what they're exposed to at an early age up until that point of hitting puberty, their body doesn't know what's going on. Their body's just preparing for this long, arduous life. So think about farm strength. If you grow up living on a farm and you're lifting heavy bags of water and heavy bags of feed and you're chasing animals around, if you grow up uh, and you're playing basketball all the time, all summer long, you're doing these things at the playground, when you're doing this before the age of 12, 13 years of age, your body is just preparing for the long physical fight that it might be in for the rest of its life. So it predetermines the fiber type that you need based off of your parents and based off of what physical challenges you've been exposed to prior to puberty. So that main question is, is it possible to shift with resistance training with power-based training? And if we're talking about just heavy lifting, just resistance-based training, what we typically see in the research and in the information is that when you're doing things like heavy squats, heavy front squats, bench presses, things like that, that are more focused on just straight up strength, we'll see a shift to more type 2A. So you're gonna be strong. You might not be as twitchy as somebody who's really, really explosive, but you will see a shift of those endurance fibers over to type 2A. So if we're doing power-based training, things at very high speed, like box jumps, and we're just doing power-based training, we're gonna see our muscle fibers be stable with our type 2X muscle fibers and a slight decrease in our type 1 muscle fibers. Now, some research on combo groups where athletes are doing heavier lifting, okay, so something like the contrast method, and then they take about a minute and a half to two minute rest, and they would walk over and do something like an explosive movement, like a box jump or a hurl hop, so they come over here after their break, and do that box jump, these athletes will see an increase in their type 2A and their type 2X, mainly based off the ratio with the diminishment of their type 1 fibers. Some muscle groups, when used or not used, will actually fiber shift faster than other muscle fibers, specifically the vastus lateralis. 
In control groups, most people are about 45% type 2A and about 5% type 2X. Ironically, most people think that bodybuilding will make you slower, but in most research, bodybuilders have been shown to have 15% of type 2X muscle fibers. Woo! So is it possible to fiber shift with endurance-based training? And there's a really interesting study where there was two identical twins. One of the twins didn't do anything. He was sort of a fat twin. The other twin was an endurance-based athlete. So he did endurance-based training all of the time. And so what they did is they compared the lethargic fat twin versus the endurance-based twin. And what they saw is the endurance-based twin had a drastically higher percentage of type one fibers. The fat twin had much more type 2A and type 2X. And so what that shows us is that you can indeed fiber shift towards more type one fibers when you're partaking in endurance-based training. So what can happen with recovery and tapering? If we have a distance runner, or even if we have a wrestler, when they have less volume in their training for that last week to two weeks, when they're starting to peak and taper, what science shows us is there's a better shift into type 2X. So one thing that we can think about is doing mobility, doing recovery-based methods, when we're taking a distance runner 800, 1500 meters, and we're trying to peak them to improve their overall kick, their power output, by recovering and tapering for about two weeks, we'll see that fiber shift to 2X while they still don't lose the aerobic capacity that they've built up throughout their training. So the big question, is fiber shifting possible? Yes, it absolutely is possible. And you are able to take an individual who might be more 2A and try to hybrid them into a more explosive individual that needs more type 2X. That same hypothetical person, you might be able to change into an 800 runner or a 1500 runner and see a fiber shift from a lot of 2A to more type 1 and 2A. So the big question becomes, what is your goal as an athlete and where do you need to see that fiber shift occur and how much volume is needed then to try and shift your fibers one way or the other? I would argue that most athletes, a very large percentage of athletes, need more type 2A and type 2X. And that's why it's okay to do those bodybuilding movements because that will help you shift to more type 2X. And even endurance runners don't wanna to be too much like Gumby because type 2A and even type 2X fibers will help them with their kick and their stride length. So the main lesson here is to understand how you can fiber shift based off of the type of training and the volume in your training and focus on shifting accordingly to your specific sport. Remember the Elaine Thompson comparison, if we're 100 meter, we want 2A and 2X. If we're somebody who's running a 10,000, we want type one and a little bit less 2A and 2X. If this is something that you're interested in and you wanna figure out better programming and better periodization, you can click on the link down below in our description. Head over to garagestrength.com and you can pick up the Sports Performance Bible. It's a book and video course series derived around enhancing general sports performance for various athletes. And that's what you can use to turn your freaks into champions. And remember, you always have to cultivate your power. Peace.